when you're at rest, obviously, time and space are separate things. Space is obviously not relative for everyone moving at ordinary speeds or at rest. However, let's say you uh, you've been moving at the speed of light, light, light. This comes precisely in the form of the Lorentz equations. What are these Lorentz equations? You may ask. Well, just for the time dilation factor that also adds on to the length contraction or length dilation. And then we have y prime, which is equal to uh, y if you're not moving in the y direction, flying at the speed of light. Now z prime, assuming you're not moving in the z direction. And then you have t prime that's going in the, uh, oh yeah, it doesn't go in any direction, but forwards, what am I saying? That's going to be like this. Sorry if this no commentary is annoying you. And then that's going to be sorry, making a bit of mistakes, plus no minus. That's how you have to describe it when you're in motion at relativistic speed. That's how you have to describe the motion of a normal person. However, when you're a normal person trying to describe a person moving at the speed of light, well, then you're going to ha want to see the following. By the way, it's been proven that it's impossible to move the uh, speed of light. I just noticed that because um, I just want to add this bit in. So sorry if this was not in the original lesson plan. Because the uh, gamma is equal to 1 over delta 1 minus uh, v over c whole squared. So now, the thing is, if you uh, set v equal to c, that's going to give you 1 minus 1 squared. You see where this is going, right? That gives you z uh, 0 on the bottom, which gives you 1 over 0, which it's impossible to actually, uh, you know, which it doesn't make sense. When you're moving at the speed of light in an inertial reference frame, you uh, walk past a person at rest. You see that person at rest speeding past you through the other way at 299 million, blah, blah, blah. That means that we can just change the signs. If you were going this way, now you go this way. If you are observing from the other direction, so now, you just change all the signs next to V, which results in a change leading to this. P prime equals to boom, bam, beam, bop. Yeah. Okay. I know we solved for this in the last one, but a lot. I want to give an example of what that, uh, this can do. So just as a recap from the last lecture, we're going to solve for u, which is delta x over delta t. Gamma x minus vt, boom. Okay, now we have this, which is going to be, oh yeah, I forgot. You have to put this, v delta t, t minus v over c squared x. So now, when you cancel the gammas, it seems you have a hot burning mess. Now, that gives us delta x over delta t minus v over delta t over delta t is one minus uh, v over c squared t, delta t. Oh, and x, vx over c squared delta t. So now, if you noticed, um, if you uh, look closely, you can actually split this up into v over c squared times x over t, I mean delta x over delta t, which adds up to u ultimately. So we have u minus v over one minus uv over c squared, which should be the correct equation for anything you have. Now, 
when you're moving at relatively small speeds, this reduces to a uh, regular Galilean equation. U is equal to U minus V over 1 minus U V over C squared. Now, this is going to be a very negligible number, which just leaves us with U V over 1 or U minus V. Say we have a rocket ship. I am not the best at drawing rocket ships. This is the best I can do for a cartoon one. Yeah, it looks horrible. So it looks like a four-year-old draw this, but hey, no fear, just for an example. And then you have the speed of light. Now, now this will be equal to, so this, a rocket is going to go at three-fourths the speed of light, and this light is going to be equal to C. So now the question is, for an observer on the ground, what is the average velocity of this rocket? 